Mestec Minister Yeo Bin is one of the busiest women in Malaysian politics and is set to get even busier as she gets ready to reveal Messi, a series of long-term reforms for the country's power sector that will shape it for years to come. In part one of our Talking Edge with the Minister, we talk about what to expect from Messi, her AT initiatives and the importance of enforcement. It's been over a year since yeah. the new government. We were talking about these in the AT initiatives that you say are all online. Yeah. And, mm. um, you know, how you, you want the ministry to kind of go forward. Well, and so, of course, the more well-known ones are the yeah. large-scale solar. Yeah. Can you just give a sort of brief overview about what these AT initiatives yeah. are supposed to kind of do? So on the energy side, there are four focus in us. Uh, the first focus was that, um, is that uh, increasing the RE, uh, renewable energy in electricity generation mix, uh, excluding 100 uh, large scale hydro above 400 megawatt from 2% to 20% by 2025. Correct. So, and then the second one is on energy efficiency. So we also are looking into how do we increase our energy efficiency, therefore energy consumption and electricity bill, not only in public sector, but also private sector. So, so that's, yeah, those are. The third one is uh, actually um, a big one as well, is messy reform, Malaysia yes. electricity supply industry reform, which I will actually announce in sometime in June, end of June. On the uh, uh, science and tech side, uh, we have a couple of focus. One focus is how do we create an ecosystem on R&D ecosystem. So there are a lot of things are ongoing on sharing of resources. Environment, um, a lot of people have mistaken uh, um, that um, the Environment Ministry in Malaysia do both uh, conservation as, as well as um, we, we call it green issue or brown issues, mm. uh, pollution control or conservation. Yes. But in Malaysia, um, after the restructuring of the, of the ministry, what we do in the Environment Ministry is pollution control. The conservation is done by the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources. Yes. So uh, our main focus is, how, uh, is, is Environmental Quality Act 1974. So a couple of things are happening. First, we are drafting a new law. Hopefully, I've seen the draft, uh, hopefully by the end of the year, or uh, latest the big uh, first quarter of next year sitting we'll be able to table the new uh, environmental or, or uh, pollution control act also the second one is of course enforcement when you have a law it doesn't necessarily means that the law can be enforced and will be enforced so so before the the new law come in actually we have a lot of slack that need to be picked up um, mm. in how the government machineries does um, uh, pollution control. That is why we also set a new target this year where we want to increase 100% of enforcement. I think that's yeah. very important, especially yeah. when it comes to enforcement, given the recent mm. incidences that mm. we have seen, mm. you know, when it comes to our rivers and everything yeah. like that. So yeah. you, you're saying we're making really, really big strides. So I'm measuring in terms of the compound that we issue and also mm. the, the case that successfully are uh, being uh, uh, charged at the court, yes. then, then these are the two things that we measure. Uh, but in terms of, we are also in terms of, because you want to do a structural change, right? you are not only talking about forcing the machinery, it's true, but it's really looking into how we do we deal with the machinery. So we're actually also looking into EQMP, Environmental Quality Management Practices, which right now we use a lot of tools that is very expensive, but not giving us the things that we want. So we are revamping right. and looking into that. Um, Hopefully, I will have some announcement soon on the because we are under a concession agreement where we're actually paying a lot to do environmental quality monitoring where we cannot actually do the enforcement. You touched on this just now, and I would like to talk a bit more about it, although I know it's going to be announced in June, yeah. is actually messy. Can you actually kind of give an outline of what to kind of expect? We can't disclose of uh, what are the things being discussed because just, just so that when you disclose, you don't disclose just. Uh, uh, it's a small, small part of it. It okay. creates more uncertainty. So as you know, the uncertainty is not good for the market. So, so we will announce uh, when, when if the cabinet approve that uh, the plan that we have. If the cabinet do not approve, then the announcement will be a bit uh, delay a bit more. Um, so, so we are looking into really uh, making um, making it more efficient across the value chain. That that, that is very general. Uh, making it more efficient across uh, more competitive uh, across the value chain. And if you look into electricity bill, so we are actually dissecting electricity bill through from the fuel, fuel procurement, generation, mm. transmission and distribution, retail, uh, which are the, uh, through that and how do we make this more efficient? How do we make this more efficient? 
and which one is the biggest one that we need to make it more efficient. So, so then you can then have a more systematic idea of how to make the market more efficient. Because, and what is the priority? Because otherwise, what is your end game? Your end game is not to restructure the market. End game is that the consumers get, get the best deal. Everything that you mentioned just now, you know, transmission, distribution, retail, yeah. it's all tied, of course, to the fact that we have one national power provider, which yeah. is like yeah. the Nago. So will yeah. we see and the IPP, so they will actually see a lot of changes? Even if there is change, it is going to be a much advanced notice change. That means we are preparing oh, you're not going the structure. To sp- just surprise uh, them. So, so, so one thing that uh, people are keep asking and keep worrying about is that whether or not we will st- terminate all the IPP contract, we will not do that. It will cost the government a lot of money to terminate that. But that does not stop us from uh, charting a new market structure in the future. So it will be a, 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 a seven years plan. Yeah? Mm. It's, it's, not a, it's not a short one. Uh, it's not a short one and it's not a big bang. So I would, I would say that this is not a big bang. And, and so for investors, uh, for people, for uh, power player is more of this is an advanced notice and uh, it will be of a, uh, of a managed and controlled change but change is inevitable talking about your successes things like you know the net energy metering take mm. up you've mm. been you've been very empowered right yeah. by the fact that people have been taking yeah, that up yeah. it's a good yeah. sign yeah. so what is the biggest challenges you think best is going to face this um, year um biggest challenges for me uh, for i think or for any leader would be of that not not of the initiatives that you do, but it's really on the uh, um, g- government machineries. Um, I think as a, what what I actually think is that if you want our st- our work or any of our initiatives to be successful, you must make sure the people that work within the uh, the ministry are empowered and motivated to do so. Mm. I, as a minister, I cannot do much you know um, and we have 80 initiatives I have so many ribbons to go and cut and <laughs> the dialogue so many interviews I need you know the people that really do work our government uh, government uh, offices so how do we make officers own the, the 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 initiatives and that is why we have a team this year is only do it easy why because I think it's very important that if there is one thing that I have to do as a leader is to make my people own the initiatives